Okay, we're going to start with we're going to start with chapter six. Before we start with chapter six, six, I want us to remember what it says in the last chapter, the last verse. His friend, his friend told him, "We have studied this. This is the way it is." He said, "Listen to our counsel, because it is good. It is for your own good." So, his friend here, Eliphaz, is telling him what we say. Now, now he sounds like a lot of religions say. A lot of religions say, this is the way it is, there is no other. And this is the way he's sounding. Because he's telling them right here, what we say is true. It's for your own good. So take our counsel. Take what we tell you. Because we know it to be true. We have enough uh, religions out there that do exactly the same thing. How many of us know that there's not just one religion out there that's right? Now they do have cults out there. And they go totally against the Word of God. So you know those aren't right. But there are several churches that believe Jesus is God. They believe in the same salvation that we believe in. So, But he's, what he's saying here is what some religions say now. Oh, we're the only ones who are right. We know what that means. It's our way it's a high, or it's the highway. That's what they're saying. In chapter 6, Eliphaz has been very harsh on Job. Verses. I'm not going to read all the verses. I'm just, but verses one through seven, you know, he's been very hard on Job, and he's blame he's blaming him for all the troubles troubles he's going through. But but Job still hasn't given in. Job still claims to be innocent. Job replies again with these verses here. He replies in the same way he has before. He's he's sad. Uh, he wish he wasn't born. But Job believes. He believes he has just cause to complain. That's what he he says in these verses. I have suffered like no man has ever suffered. So he has, he believes he has just cause to complain. Let me ask you this: Do we have any just cause to complain? Whatever comes on us, we deserve it. Remember, I've said this before. We God would be God, and He would still be just if He never sent His Son to die on the cross for us. You know that? He would still be a justified God if he would have just, after Adam, he made perfect Adam. I mean, he made Adam a perfect man. Adam is the one who messed up. Our father, our earthly father, is Adam. He messed up so that it made the rest of us bad. And it's because of Adam we're going through what we go through. But God did not, listen to me, God did not have to send his son to come and down the cross for us. Don't think for a minute that we deserve that. God did not have to do that. People look at it like, oh, well, he had to do something. No, he didn't have to do anything. And he still would have been just. He still would have been right. You sin, that's it. Now, the, from you on down, y'all are condemned. So this complaining that he was doing, and he thinks he was justified by complaining, we're not justified to do anything. We, we, uh, we shouldn't complain to the Lord, especially, about anything. The only thing we should do all the time, all the time, is praise Him for even thinking, for even thinking about saving us, giving, a, giving us a way of salvation, for even thinking about sending His Son, Jesus, for even thinking about it, we should praise Him. And then we should praise Him even more because He did it. Because He did it. So our complaints that we have... Job thinks he's justified. Job, a man of God, a real man of God, was complaining. He didn't curse God. Just remember this. Job says, says a lot of things, but he didn't curse God. He didn't turn from the Lord. His eyes have always been on the Lord. He's complaining, but his eyes are on the Lord. In verses 8 through 13, like I say, he continues... Talking about, Lord, just take me home. Put me out of my misery and take me home. He's saying, do you think my heart is like a stone? That I have no feelings? This is what he's saying in these verses. He has feelings. He has a right to, how can I put it? To feel bad. And, he, and really, he has a right to complain. But, like I said, the, the main thing we see here, that he's not turning away from the Lord. In verses 14 through 21, he's saying that the only, the only thing he wants from his friends is some love. 
is for them to be compassionate with him. For them to have a little sympathy on him. I mean, that's what a Christian should do, right? When someone just lost everything they had, their children, everything, shouldn't a Christian come and be compassionate and a friend, a brother, and have sympathy on them? Shouldn't we? That's the way we should be. But instead, his friends, they showed no fear of God. They show no love. Instead of getting comfort, he was receiving torment from them. These men sound like the devil. This is what the devil would do. When you're down, the devil wants to kick you more and keep you down. And this is what his friends were doing. Job feels the same way Jesus did. In John chapter 12, verse 27, Jesus says, Now is my soul troubled. Jesus said that. Matthew 26, 38, Jesus says, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. In Matthew 27, 46, He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, Jesus said all these things. On His way to the cross, this is what He said. On the cross, this is where He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, Job is feeling the same thing here. He feels like the Lord has forsaken him. And he's feeling this sorrow. He's feeling the trouble. And so we say, well, you know, Jesus can go through it because Jesus was the Messiah. You know, he was the Christ. You know, I can't be like him. Okay, well, now we have a man here. His name is Job. A hundred percent man. Okay, a hundred percent man, just like us. hundred percent man. And he's being Christ-like. So we can't say, well, Jesus went through it, but I can't be like Jesus. I mean... Well, okay, well, then what's your excuse for us, for us not being like Job? You hear what I'm saying? What's our excuse now? Because Job was not the Christ. He was not the Messiah. He was a man just like us. And he kept his eyes on the Lord. No matter what happened to him, he kept his eyes on the Lord. Verses 22 and 23, his friends, he tells his friends, I didn't ask for your help. He's saying, I don't, I don't know why y'all came because I didn't ask for your help. He said, I didn't send for you to help deliver me from my enemy. You know, these friends, they've come and they're attacking them. So Job's now saying, I don't, you know, who sent for you? I didn't send for you. If you were coming to help me, that's one thing, but you've done nothing but attack me. In verses 30, 24 through 30, he tells Eliphaz, he says, tell me. Tell me what I've done wrong. I'll listen to you. I'll Just tell me what I've done wrong. It might hurt me. Because whatever I've done wrong, it must be pretty bad for all this treatment I'm getting. But he said, just tell me. Tell me what I've done. Job is saying that he's a righteous man. He said, and I know the difference between right and wrong. I would have repented. Now in chapter 7, through his complaining, we're going to find out how long he's been going through this trouble. Now let me say this. From chapter 3, from chapter 3 to chapter 42... All those chapters, from 3 all the way to 42, all this is in one day. All this happens. In, all, like I said, between verses uh, chapter 2 and chapter like 38, it, it, it's all one day. Like he, 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 he has these three friends come, and it shows this friend first. It talks about him and everything he said. Then, he, then they show his other friend, and he, they use several chapters to show this. How he's saying exactly the same thing. And the third friends. All three friends are telling him the same thing. But it took all those chapters. Just to show. The bottom line. They're all three telling him the same thing. You're wrong. You need to repent. So from chapter 3. All the way to the end. That's only one day. But right here we find in chapter 7. We find out that Job said it's been months. So from the time he lost them. And by the time his friends find out. You know, they didn't find out the same day. You know, you they went through seven days of fasting, right? So there was he said it was months. So this is just not a this didn't just happen overnight. Now once his friends showed up, then we're talking, yes, one day. But before then, right here he says it was months. So Job was hurting and suffering for months. In verse eleven, he says, Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. And as we can see, Job is doing a very good job of complaining. And then in verses 13, 13 and 14, it says, 
When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch, my couch shall ease my complaint. What he's saying here is, when I go to sleep, at least when I'm sleeping, I could be at ease. I won't have this pain. That's what he's saying. But in verse 14, he says, Then thou scarest me with dreams. Even though I go to sleep, hey, hoping I'll get away from it for a little while, but even in my dreams, you scare me and terrify me through visions, is what Job is saying. Now at this time, Job, st Job still doesn't know that all these attacks are from the devil. He still doesn't know. We know it's not from the Lord. Because right? we read the book, it's not from the Lord. And also we know that this is not from the Lord. is because in first, 2 Timothy 1.7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So his dreams, if they're scaring him, this is not from the Lord. This is not from the Lord. This is the devil still attacking him. Because the Lord does not give us dreams to be scared of. That would terrify us. The Lord's not going to do that. So we can see, like I said, Job doesn't know. But we know the devil here is still attacking him. Then in verse 17, it says, What is man? That thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thy heart upon him. So Job is saying, what is man? What am I that you should even care about me? That, sh that thou shouldest magnify me, and that your heart be on me. You know, who am I? Why, why do you do this? He's asking the Lord this. And then we ask ourselves, you know, okay, why? Why? We should ask the, ourselves, we should ask the Lord, why? Why me? Because I know me. Maybe my friend here, or, or this person in my family, maybe they don't know me, but you know me, because you know my heart. Do you? Do you? Now, these are questions for y'all, for me. But these are questions that y'all need to ask yourselves. Do you hate sin? Like I said, don't answer, but think about it. Do you really hate sin? Because it is against God. It's against the one who's given you salvation. It's the one that's given you mercy and grace. Do you hate sin? Because it's against your father. Ask yourself that. Do you really, really hate sin? Or does sin really don't bother you? You can see it. You can be around it. And it really doesn't bother you that much. Ask yourself that. Do you really give them 100% of yourself? Or do you always hold back a little? Well, this part, you know. I mean, I'm going to do all this. But this little part right here, you know. You know what I'm saying? In which I've read to you before. He wants all of you. Because if you can't believe everything in this Bible. Then you can't give him your all. Because you can go through here. And say well. I'm not going to give him that. Because I don't believe in it. Well then you're not giving your all. Why does the Lord care about us? If we do all these things right here. That I'm mentioning. If we really hate sin. Or if we really give him 100% of ourselves. Pretty much all of us. We have not given him 100%. We're holding, we're holding things back. Well, I'm not ready to give him this. But I'm going to do all this, but I'm just not ready to give him this. Do you meditate on him day and night? That's what the Bible says. It says meditate on the Lord day and night. Do you do that? Do we do that? Do we really worship him? Worship, not praise him. Remember, there's a difference. Do we really worship the Lord? Do we fall on our knees, I mean, or, or fall down flat on the ground and cry? And cry out to the Lord. Do we? Because that's worship. Sitting down kneeling, or, and praying to Him. You know, we're praying to Him, but that's not worshiping Him. Worshiping Him is when you're totally humbled, totally flat on the ground, humbling yourself to Him. That's what worship is. Now, if we did all that, then I can say, okay, well, I can see why He cares about us. Lord, look at me. I'm a poor, weak Creature. This is what Job is saying. I'm doing nothing but complaining about my troubles. And you're being such a great and glorious God. This is what Job is saying. That you even have a heart to listen to me. He said, for you to even have a heart to listen to me is an honor. Okay, this is what Job is saying. Verse 17. What is man? What are we that God should even care about us? That's, that's a big question. You know that? When we read that, we should ask ourselves, you know, why does the Lord care? Why does He care about me? Why does He love me? Why, why does He send His mercy to me? 
Because this is the way I am. And only you can answer the way you are. Because I know, I know the way I am. And even though I spend all that time in there studying, and I love the Lord with all my heart, but I also know there's times I fail Him. I'm weak in areas that I really don't have no right to be weak in. Because he He's given me the power to overcome the sin. But I don't use it. Uh, can I use the excuse, well, I'm not perfect. Can I say that? I mean, when you go before the, the Lord and say, Lord, well, I, well, I'm not perfect. What do you think He's going to do with that? He's going to say, hey, didn't I put myself in you? Didn't I put my Holy Spirit in you to give you strength? Didn't I do that? Verse 18. And that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment. He's thinking that God is, is the one doing all this to him. And he says, why are you concentrating on me? Job is saying, why are you concentrating on me? You're testing me every day. Why are you doing that? Verse 19. How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow my sp sp spittle? He's saying, Lord, can you just leave me alone? Just leave me alone at least long enough so I can swallow. Meaning, take a breath. Job is saying, can you just leave me alone just, just enough, just, to, just, just so I can at least breathe a little. This is what Job is saying. Verse 20. I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee? O that preserver of men, why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? So that I am burdened to my to myself. He's saying I have sin, but it's a sin that is not, you know, what I'm going through. This is not why I, I have not committed a sin, and that's why I'm going through this. This is what he's saying. I don't know why you have picked on me, even to the point where I want to die. He said so that the, I am a burden to myself. Meaning that's why he says I want to die. It's such a burden to him. He wants to die. But he, he has said, I have sinned. So Job is not saying he's sinless. Job is not saying he's a perfect man. He knows he's a sinner. In verse 21, And why doest thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now shalt I sleep <clears throat> in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be there. Again he's saying, If I have sinned, bring it to me. Show me what I've done so I can repent and get out of this trouble. And he says, and if you don't, I won't be here in the morning. Job was there in the morning. But he didn't think he could take another night of it. In chapter 8, now we're going to get on to another friend. This is his second friend. Then answer Bildad and said, How long wilt thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doeth God pervert judgment, or doeth the Almighty pervert justice? So far, he's right on what he's saying. But in verse 4, If thy children have sinned against him, and he hath cast them away from their transgressions, if thou shouldest seek unto God's bedtime, and make thy supplication to the Almighty. He's saying, Job, quit crying. God doesn't make mistakes. Now, this is what his, his, his new friend, his second friend is saying to him. He said, God doesn't make mistakes. Quit crying and, and that God doesn't make mistakes. He said, if your kids sin, they deserve to die. This is what it says right here. Read the verse. This is what it's saying. He's telling Job, if you would go to the Lord at bedtime and pray for your children, this wouldn't have happened. Well, again, he doesn't know what he's talking about because we, what we read in chapter 1... Verse 5, that's exactly what Job did, remember? He had burnt offerings. He, he offered burnt offerings for his children. So we can see right here, right off the bat, his second friend, he don't know what he's talking about. We should be careful on what we tell other people. Now he probably thought this, this friend of his, but Job did do it. Job was doing it. So when we attack somebody, we want to make sure whatever we're attacking them on, that somewhere along the line that's, that they didn't do it or they did do it. Be careful on what we tell people. But we can see right here his second friend is starting right off the bat being off base. In verse 6, If thou wert pure and upright, 
Surely now he would awake for thee and make the inhabitants of thy righteousness, righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly, should greatly increase. Again, we can see that this man doesn't know what he's talking about because God has already said that Job was pure and upright. At the very beginning, remember it says, God said that, have you found my, my man Job, who was pure and upright? Right here, he's, he's saying, if you were pure and upright. Well, the Lord, the Lord already said that he was. So again, this friend doesn't know who he's talking about. He's telling him to clean up his life, get right with God, and he'll restore his home, that he would grow, and he'll have more than what he started off with. Right now. Because he says now. Now he would do this. <sighs> Not true. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. It says because sentence against an evil work is not ex executed speedily. Right here the Lord is saying when an evil man, when he gets right, his evil work is not executed speedily. He's, the Lord doesn't right off, you know, right off the bat, okay, you got everything you want. Because now you're a Christian, you got everything you want. No, it's a slow process, like I've told you before. The Lord right here, he, he, the Lord doesn't jump when we say jump. Okay, Lord, I, I've repented of this sin, now reward me for it. So this guy right here, like I said, a lot of these verses, that a lot of things they say, part of it sounds good, and, and it's, but it's not from the Lord, but it sounds good. And the other parts of what they say is from the Lord, but it's not for this. It's not for this situation. This counsel that he's given him right here, you know, get your right, with, get yourself right with the Lord, and you can be prosperous right now. Well, today, you know who does that today? These these people that you see on these preachers on TV, name it and claim it. That's what they're doing. That's, they're doing exactly what this guy says right here. Get right with God now, and you can have everything you want. That's what they teach. They're teaching the same thing that this lost person is teaching. Name it and claim it. But this is a lost man. This is a lost man. And God didn't tell him. Now Job, this is going to happen to Job. We're going to find at the end of the book that Job does get all this. But this is not what this guy's saying. This guy's saying, you can get it right now. He's saying, hey, you do this. And it's not because he heard from the Lord. That's just his way of believing. Be good and God will give you everything you want. So he wasn't, he wasn't prophesying to Job saying, hey, the Lord's going to restore everything that you had before. He wasn't doing that. He was teaching his teachings, what he believes in. Like I said, he was a lost man, so he did not know. The Lord didn't tell him, okay, Job's going to get everything back. Do we see Christians with everything they want? There's, there's Christians out there that I see, they don't have everything they want. They have everything they need, because that's a promise. God said, I will give you all your needs. They do have all their needs. Now, sometimes he gives us our wants. Sometimes he doesn't. That's up to him. But there's no Christians out there who are in need. Just like them, them people who put them, them signs on the corner, hold them signs. If they were Christians, they wouldn't have to be doing that. Because the Lord would give them food. The Lord would give them shelter. And the Lord would give them clothing. Because they need that. And if they were Christians, the Lord would give them that. So the best thing you can give those people out there is the plan of salvation. Because giving them money is not going to help them. It might take care of their little alcohol, if they're alcoholics, because there are many of them are alcoholics. It might, it might put some more money in their pockets that they already have. His first friend, his second friend, I've told you they're lost. I've shown you by what they're saying that they're lost. But let me just cover it with this. Let me, let me show you a verse that there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, people who believe that these are Christian men, I guess they don't read Job chap, uh, chapter 42, verse 7. I guess they didn't read it. Because it says, Job 42, verse 7. It was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, My wrath is kindled against thee, God is saying, my wrath is kindled against you, Eliphaz, and against thy two friends. This guy that we're talking now, he says, and against thy two friends. Now listen, 
This is scripture. This is in Job. He says, For ye have not spoken of me the things that are right. So God's saying right here, everything you said was not right. This is in Job, in the same book. I didn't have to go somewhere else and look for it. Did I go to uh, somewhere else that made it sound like it? No, God is plainly saying right here that these three guys, for you have not spoken of me the things that are right. Plainly, it's saying these men were not speaking the right things. Right here, God, God himself is saying they have not spoken nothing right. And I wanted to read that to you. And instead of waiting until I got to chapter 42 if I ever get there. <laughs> but I wanted y'all to see that I, I'm, these men are lost. Religious men are this way. They don't speak the word of God. There's churches out there and they have their way of salvation. If you do this, 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 and this, then you might make it to heaven. There's, church, there's religious men. Just like these are supposed to be religious men. Because they're, they're quoting some scriptures. They're, they are quoting some scriptures. Now these are supposed to be religious men. With wisdom from the Lord. But we found that that's not true. But even the same thing is still going on today. We have religious men who speak just like they do. It sounds good. It sounds good. But does it align with the Word of God? And that's where we need to know what the Word of God says. So we can say, mm, no. But he says right here at the end, he says, they don't speak the right things. They do not speak the right things of me. And then the last part of the verse, it says, as my servant Job hath. So he's saying, they haven't, but my servant Job has been speaking the truth. So, and that's us. We're to be like Job. We're Christians, and we're supposed to be like Job and tell the truth. Use the scriptures the way the Lord said to use them. Because believe me, People are taking the scriptures and totally taking them out of context. And the only way you're going to know that is by reading the word. Well, wait a minute. He used that verse and it sounds right. But, if, but I remember reading above it. It says that's to whoever. That's not addressed to us. So why are they using that verse for us when it's addressed to, you know, say the tribulation saints. It might be addressed to them and not to us. But this man is using this verse for us. When it's supposed to be for the tribulation saints. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So that's why we need to read. And if we don't know the book or the verse that he's talking about, then whatever verse he gives us, then we need ourselves, we need to check it out. Okay, let me make sure that this is right what he said. That's what we need to do. Now verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon earth are a shadow shall not they teach thee and tell thee and other words out of their heart so what he's referring to here he's saying that the men like Noah men like Noah you know back then they lived anywhere from 8 to 900 years that's what he's talking about the age men they knew a whole lot more than what we know He's saying today, we don't live now. Back at this time, they were living hmm, maybe 200 years. But he's saying those men back there who lived eight to 900 years, they knew a whole lot more than us because we're only living about 200 years. This is what he's saying. Now, we don't even live nowhere near that. If we hit 100, praise God, we've been blessed. But we don't live nowhere near that. But can we have the, can we have the truth? We, we can have the truth if we want it. Verse 11. And twelve, can the rush grow up with without mire? Can the flag grow without water? And it's talking about water grass here. Whilst, whilst it is yet in its greenness and not cut down, it withers before any other herb. Verse thirteen. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrites' hopes shall perish. Like I said, what he's saying here, the water, he's talking about water grass. Can a water grass grow without a marsh? No. You've got to have a marsh to have water grass. And can a marsh grow weeds without water? No, a marsh has to have water. And he says before they're, they cut, they start flowering, the water grass. But then they start to wither away before the weeds. 
Now this is talking about that. What he's saying here, he's saying, can water grass grow without water? Of course not. Will trouble really happen with someone who's, who is right with God? He's, he's comparing the two like they're the same. Can trouble really happen to someone who's right with God? And this is what they've been saying. If you were right with God, this wouldn't be happening with, to you. This is what they're saying. He's telling Job that he's a hypocrite and that he's forgotten God. Job is the water, grass, without any water. That's, the, that's why they gave him that little parable like that he was, he was the water grass without water. He was com- proclaiming to be something that he wasn't. Verse 14. Whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider web. He says your, your hope will fall just like a spider's web. That's not strong at all. A spider web is not strong at all. It's strong for little mosquitoes like but let, let anything with any kind of weight fall on it, it's going to break. And that's all he's saying here. In verse 15, He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heap, and seeth the place of stones. If he destroyed him from his place, then it shall deny him saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Pretty much all these verses are saying is, it comes down to Job, you're a hypocrite. All this is what happens to good people. To good people. But because these things are not happening to you, and you proclaim that you're, you're a man of God, but like I said, bottom line, he's calling Job a hypocrite right here. In verse 20, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. This is verse 20. This sounds like a good verse that Bildab is using. But there's one thing wrong with it. Y'all should have caught it as soon as I read it. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. Man. Is there any perfect man? There is no perfect man. So right here, right off the bat, we ought to know, okay, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. There is no perfect man. And he helps evildoers? Yes, he does. Even when we were lost, he helped us. We might not know it, but he did. I don't, I really don't like talking about my past. But there was a time... Drunk, drunk as a skunk, went over the bridge. We stop on the bridge like idiots. Then we hang over the bridge. And I'm so drunk, I I can't even pull myself back up. So I'm having to holler. And they pulled me up. But what I'm saying, what I'm showing is, God is with you when you don't even know it. I believe, now this is what I believe. I believe God knew that I was going to accept him in my life. And there's times out there where he saved me from like that. I've had a knife. Like I said, I don't like doing this. But I've had a knife put right up through my, right to my, not close, right to my throat. And got away. I've had a gun pull on me. Got away. I believe all that is because God was watching over me. I was lost. But God knew. He foresees everything. God knew that I would come to know him. I believe that. This is what I believe, okay? So yes, does he help the evildoers? Yes, he does. In fact, Luke chapter 6, verse 35, it says, For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Matthew 5, 45, which I've read this one before. For he maketh his son, his son to rise on the evil and on the good. So does he help evildoers? Now this guy's making it sound like he doesn't. But we're reading verses saying he showing that God does. Verse twenty one. Till he fill thy mouth with laughing, and thy lips with with rejoicing, they that hate thee shall be clothed with the shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Now this is true. When the when the end of the world comes, it speaks about it in Revelation, but until then 
Yes, there are people who are going to die with peace, with joy, with wealth. I don't I forgot the guy's name, but the Playboy Bunny guy who owns the mansion Hefner. That's an evil man. That's not a Christian man, but I'd say he's enjoying life pretty good, don't you think? He's got everything he wants. He's got all the women he wants. What this is saying here, that doesn't happen, but uh, it does happen. Now, remember, there's temporary and there's eternal. Now, in eternal life, they do. They are ended. But just for temporarily, yes, there are men out there who live a great life, happiness, money, well, I mean, got it all. But at the end, what? Nothing. So this is true, but it's also not for this time. So, like I said, we need to read the verses that... When you read these verses, okay, well, yeah, I do know men who, who live this way. You say they don't, but they do. But, like I said, it's only a temporary thing. Chapter 9. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so a truth. But how should man be just with God? Watch who you listen to. These men are lost, which I've already showed you. Job 42, 7. They don't speak the word of God. But they've got Job. They've said so much to him that Job is now, he's saying now, he's saying, well, you know, pretty much you're saying it's true. You know, if someone comes up to you with a different gospel, they can be very convincing. Very convincing. It makes... They can make it, it uh, where it sounds true, and it makes sense, and this is what these men have, have done. And then after a little while, you're like, oh, maybe he's right. That's why when you decide to live for the Lord, make sure that is your decision, and that you're not going to listen to another gospel. And I will say, another gospel is Mormons, is Jehovah Witnesses. Those are another Gospels. But if you're going to sit down and listen to them, you're taking a chance of exactly what happened to Job right here. Job, a man of God, knew the truth. But right here he's saying, I know it's, it's, you know what you're saying is, is kind of true. I mean, he's kind of like starting to believe them. So when you let these Jehovah Witnesses, these, Jeho- uh, these Mormons, and whoever's listening to the CD, I, I, yes, I'm going to name them. Because what kind of shepherd would I be if I didn't warn the sheep of the wolf? But if you sit down, that's why the Lord said, if someone comes with another gospel, the Lord says, not to even let him in your house. Don't even let him in your house. But this is what's happening to Job. He's listening. And everything, pretty much everything they're, they're talking about, they're taking out of context. And then he says, but how should I made, how should man be justified with God? Job Job knows this answer because, I mean, he knows how to be justified with God because, like I said, he did it back in chapter 1 with his kids. He had blood atonement, burnt offerings. So Job knew the answer to this, but how should my man be justified with God? So now these guys, they're kind of like, Job is going through so much. Remember, he's going through a lot. He just lost everything. So when someone who's just lost everything, they're not really all there because their mind is just, you know what I'm saying? But they're catching him at the right time when he's not at full strength believing what he believes. Okay, we're, we're seeing it right here. But we know he knows what, is, what do you have to do to be right with God. We know that because he's already, he, showed him, he showed us himself what he did with his kids. But remember, he just went through a lot. And when someone goes through something like he went through, you know, that's their... That's, that's when they're um, that's when they're they're at their weakness. Okay, that's when you uh, that's when the enemy wants to jump on you when he knows you're weak. Verse three. If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is saying that anyone wanting to stand up to God, they wouldn't be able to answer him. Not even one out of a thousand questions. Someone who wants to stand up and question God on what he's doing, right here is saying they wouldn't even be able to answer one out of a thousand questions to the Lord. And we know that's true. Why do we know that's true? It's biblical. It's in the scriptures. 
Back in Matthews, the New Testament in Matthews, when the religious leaders, remember when they came to him and they, they asked him questions? Now, I'm not going to go through the questions or anything, but back in Matthews, if you go to Matthews, the religious, the religious leaders came to Jesus and asked him a question. And Jesus said, well, before I answer you, you answer me. And God would ask them a question. And every time he asked them a question, they couldn't answer him. And when they couldn't answer him, he said, okay, if you can't answer me, then I'm not going to answer you. Well, y'all remember that? If you don't, it's in Matthews. Read Matthews. So right here, Matthew shows that this is true. They couldn't answer Jesus' questions. And right here in, in Job, it says it. He cannot answer him not one of a, of a thousand questions. Verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered. Now we've had this verse already. I've showed like Hitler. He, has, he had his craftiness and, and, and he did prosper. But it was a temporary thing. Just like Cain when he killed his brother. Cain did prosper. He had a mark on him. The Lord put a mark on him. But he did have a life. So, yes, it can happen. People can be this way and still prosper. So, people who would prosper out there don't think it's because they're right with the Lord. Because there's people out there who, who have prospered, but they're not right with the Lord. We know that. We've seen it. Verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. Which removeth the mountains, and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stores, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and spreadeth upon the waves of the sea. What Job is doing here, he's praising God. He just shown how all God is. Because God can do all this. He's just shown how powerful God is. That's what he's doing right here by, by saying these, in these verses what he's saying. He's praising the Lord. He's showing God is powerful.